Hello. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain the two transistor model of SCR. It is also called as two transistor analogy. So that means uh, first we need to understand the structure of SCR. So that is uh, shown over here. The structure of SCR is comprising of three terminals, namely anode, cathode, and gate terminal. Right? So and it has got four layers. The layers are P, N, P, N. So because of these four layers, it creates a three junction. In between P and N, there is a one sandwich that is called junction J1. J1, junction J1 exists between first P N layer. The next J2 exists between N and P layer. And J3 exists between P and N layer. So if you want to understand uh, the what happens to the junction, each junction, how the gate controls the uh, turn on, trigger, uh, trigger on of SCR. So this can be understood by using a model. So what is this model? So uh, since we have four layers, so this four layer and the three junctions can be separated as two transistor. So how the first three layers, P, N, P, is separated as one transistor transistor one because we are familiar with transistor analysis at all so that's why instead of four uh, layer analysis we are going to separate it as three layers there are npn layer also the another uh, uh, transistor is npn so the two transistors are separated now the three layers of each we separated okay so if we separate this PNP and NPN, the connection is going to be like this. Okay. So we are going to use now, since we have created a, created the layers as a transistors, T1 and T2. So we are going to use the uh, transistor analysis uh, terminologies like IC1, collector, base, okay, and emitter. Uh, and also we are going to equate that particular collector emitter to cathode and anode. Okay. So please understand that. So it can be represented with the help of layer structure or it can be directly uh, represented with the help of uh, transistor symbol. Okay. Either you can represent like layers or it can be represented with the uh, symbols, sim transistor symbols. Okay. So if I represent that, so you know that this terminal is anode uh, where this is a PNP transistor, PNP transistor here. And this is NPN transistor. And please observe the input is applied here uh, uh, to anode with respect to the cathode. So this is common base configuration. Common base configuration. We, uh, we, we are already familiar with uh, common base configuration. So when I say common base configuration, you should know what is alpha. Okay. What is alpha? alpha? That is current transfer ratio. So alpha is nothing but IC by IE, okay? Output current by input current. Usually uh, we get uh, this approximately equal to unity one or it may be slightly less than that. It's 0.94 uh, something, okay? So you may get in this uh, particular because IE is slightly greater than IC. Why IE is slightly greater than IC? Just because we know IE is equal to IB plus IC, right? So this usually it's in micro ampere and this is in milliampere, milliampere. So adding this or uh, leaving this doesn't make much difference. So you are going to get around 0.95 or 0.96 something value here. So equal, uh, almost equals to unity. So this is very important here uh, for the analysis sake. Okay, why it is important, I'll let you know. Just because, so here we are going to use two transistors, T1 and T2. So if I if I want to represent the T1 transistor with respect to the current transfer ratio and IE terminologies, then I should make it as I alpha 1, then IC1, IE1, then IE1, IB1, IC1 like that. Similarly, if I want to denote it for the transistor 2, then this has to be alpha 2, IE2, IC2. Likewise, we are going to change it okay since we have a connection like this so please observe the emitter terminal this is a emitter terminal this is emitter terminal of pnp transistor 
and this is collector terminal and this is base terminal of a PNP transistor. And here we have collector terminal, base terminal of NPA transistor and emitter terminal is here. So that means anode is connected to the P layer, PNP transistor uh, in the PNP transistor it is connected to the emitter junction, okay, emitter layer, emitter terminal. Then this collector is connected to the base of the transistor T2. So that means IC1 is equal to IB2 that is mentioned here. IC1 is equal to IB2. Please observe this. And here, since the base one is connected to the collector of the NPN transistor, your IB1 is equal to IC2. So this understanding is very important. And your IE1 can also be IE1 is nothing but IA. The current here, IA is nothing but IE1 because it's a emitter terminal. And similarly, IK, your IK is nothing but I, I, uh, IE2, right? So this understanding is very important. What is IA, what is IK, what is IG? All this information is very important for further analysis. So let's try to understand how, how it is going to uh, how this can be represented using two transistor analogy okay since it's a common base configuration so let's look at the equation uh, perspective of analysis so if you observe here ik is nothing but your cathode current is nothing but the sum of ia and ig okay because there are two current uh, passing here it is sum of these two current if you look at this there are here anode anode terminal and gate terminal your cathode is dependent on both anode and uh, gate current. So that's why IK is equal to IA plus IG. This is very important equation. So later we are going to use this. Okay. Now we have the relation from transistor analysis. That's what I mentioned here. IE is nothing but IE is nothing but IB plus IC. We know this. So if I want to find IB, then IB is equal to IE minus IC. So if with respect to the transistor 1, it becomes IB1, IE1, IC1. The same is denoted here. So let's look into that aspect. IB1, why uh, are we going to uh, refer this? Just because your IA, uh, IA term will, is connected to the transistor 1 and cathode is connected to the transistor 2. Both are very important to me. Okay, IA and IK is important to me. And how your IA, IK and IG is interrelated here. That is going, we are going to demonstrate. Illustrate with the equations. Okay. So also, we know that your IC1 is equal to alpha 1 IE1. How we got this expression? Because we know that relation alpha is equal to because it's a common uh, base configuration. For common base configuration, output current is IC, input current is IE, right? This also can be written as IC is equal to alpha IE. So with respect to the transistor one, if I want to talk, then IC1, alpha 1, IE1. That's what I have written here. IC1 is equal to alpha 1, IE1. So call IK is equal to IA plus IG as the equation 1. And with the help of transistor analysis, we know the expression for the common base. So this both equation is used for common base configuration. Okay. So now moving ahead. So next box. So this is box one. This is box two. Let's look at the box two. Uh, how we have substituted. Substituting equation 2.3 in equation 2.2. Because there is an IC1 terminal term here. That can be expanded as alpha 1 into times the IE1. So that is substituted over here. Okay. And if you look at IE1 is common in both uh, expressions, so then you can uh, take it common. So that becomes 1 minus alpha 1. So here IE1 is nothing but IA. As I already told, your IE emitter 1, transistor 1, emitter 1 is nothing but transistor 1. In the transistor 1, it is connected to the anode. So the current flowing through that is denoted as IE1. So IE1 can be represented as here they have mentioned. So the box 3, please refer the box 3 now here. So the same IB1 is equal to 1 minus alpha 1. IE1 is replaced with the IA now term. You know that by looking at the diagram, you can, it is evident. Also, 
IC2 is equal to alpha 2 IE2. Again, the, with the help of transistor analysis, we know that. So, in with respect to the transistor 2, it becomes IC2 into is equal to alpha 2 times the IE2, right? So, moving to the next block, fourth block, from figure 2.4, it is also observed that IK is equal to IE2. So, this IE2 can be replaced as IK. How? Because you can observe here, your this NPN transistor, the emitter terminal is connected to the cathode terminal, cathode point, right? So, this IK is nothing but IE2. So, that's what they have written, IC2 is equal to alpha times the IE2. So, in the place of IE2, you can substitute IK, okay? Therefore, IC2 is equal to alpha 2 times the IK. So, that's what uh, from the figure we can denote. Now, we know that, we know that there are two important relations I have already told by looking at the uh, the, the interconnection of uh, the collector and base terminals here. The, this transistor one base is connected to the this particular uh, collector terminal of a transistor two. So that is very important for me. So IB1 is equal to IC2. So let me use this relation. You just found here IB1 and IC2 we know that, right? We, and also we know the relation IB1 is nothing but IC2. So, you substitute these uh, two equations. IB1 is nothing but 1 minus alpha 1 times the IA. So, that is substituted here. Okay. And I, I know that what is uh, what is IC2? IC2 is just obtained here in the 2.5 2. equation. So, substitute 2.4 and 2.5 in 2.6. So, you are going to get 2.7 equation. That is 1 minus alpha 1 times the IA is equal to alpha 2 times the IK. Okay. And we know that what is IK? IK is nothing but it is a summation of both IA plus IG. Right. So, this we are going to substitute here. Okay. Then once you substitute that, then IA term is in both left side and right side. So, bring it to the left side and you, you can get only the IA term with the common factor here that is 1 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to alpha 2 times the IG. So, finally what is IA? So, I need to find out what is IA the anode current. So, that is uh, directly proportional to the alpha 2 times the IG divided by inversely proportional to the 1 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So, this equation is the final expression which is very important to determine the characteristics of a anode current in a SCR. Okay, so by using two transition analogy, you can uh, find out what is IA. Okay, okay. If you consider the leakage current in both the transistor, please observe. If you consider the leakage current in both transistor, so we have to consider both ICO1 and ICO2 also here. So that becomes alpha 2 times IG plus ICO1 plus ICO2 divided by this factor. So, uh, in the in the derivation we had ex, we have excluded this ICO1 and ICO2. Now, if you want to include, uh, if you if you want to consider, then we can include that. There will be a minor, very negligible effect, uh, especially ICO1 and uh, it's a leakage current both in the both in the both transistor. It's very very negligible amount. So that can also be represented in this equation as this particular term. Okay. So, this term 2.8, this equation 2.8 is very important to me. So, let us look at that particular equation now. From equation 1, uh, if from equation 2.8, it can be analyzed with that. So, if I substitute this alpha 1 plus alpha 2 as 1, if I make this both alpha 1 and alpha 2 1, then what happens? So, it this IA is going to be very large value. IA is going to be very large value. Okay. So, how large it is? So, it uh, initially it is in off state. So, immediately when, when I make alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is equal to 1. So, it attains very high value approaching infin infinity. In other words, we can say the device suddenly latches into the conduction on state from the non-conduction off state. So, this is what happens. So, if you maintain this particular value as uh, 1, then 1 minus 1 is 0. So, anything by 0 is going to be very large value. So, what is large value? 
large value is nothing but from off state it is going to be on state because we want IA to be conducting right so this can also be stated as the gate current IG is of such a value that alpha 1 plus alpha 2 approaches unity uh, unity value the device will trigger it str now it's in on state thank you